week two, so. I've entitled a message this morning, Near the First Christmas, because that's where our text takes place, is just prior to the birth of our Savior. Matthew chapter 1, verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away unto Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations, which makes a total of 42 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. And as his mother Mary was his spouse or engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thy son of David. Fear not to take away, or take unto thee Mary, thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. She shall bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. I underline that, by the way. Not in the Bible that way, but I underlined it. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. And he knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son. He called his name Jesus. Again, our text takes place just prior to the first Christmas, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, a name that's above every name, a name that's going, a name that's going to be, live in the infamy, Eternally, we'll be praising the name of Jesus forever. Uh, our text tells us about the virgin birth. It's a record of the virgin birth. No matter what skeptics may say, they said it then, and they still say it. But 30 years later, when our Lord had begun his ministry, he was approached by the Jews, the Pharisees, Sadducees, and he told them, Before Abraham was, I am. Amen. I got here before Abe did. And he said, Man, you're not even 50 years old. I said, How can you say that? And then he told them who their father was. John 8, 44. You're of the father, the devil. The liar, the father of liars. You both not in the truth. And they, with that accusation, sought to kill him. And they took up stones, would have killed him had they, the Lord not uh, said, it's not my time yet. But his father... was our almighty God in heaven. And they resented the fact that he claimed to be the son of God. Well, thank the Lord today that because of him, we all can be sons of God. Amen. And an heir, joint heir, with him, his name is Jesus. But it was a virgin birth that was forecast. 
the necessity of the virgin birth, the message never grows old. I've said it many times here, and I'll say it again. Our Lord was born, conceived by the Holy Spirit with Mary. She had never known man. She was, this, Jesus was the seed of his mother Mary, or the seed of the woman. Genesis 3.15 tells us that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent. And that promise was made from the Garden of Eden. It was not fulfilled until years later. Forty-two generations after Abraham heard the uh, prophecy that his seed would bless all nations, meaning the seed of Christ that would come. You and I were born of the blood of Adam. And because of Adam, death passed upon all men. We were born in sin. It's in our bloodstream. If you get a uh, blood from another person, it's going to be sinner's blood. Because that's what we have. That's what we were born with. We were the seed of man. Jesus was the seed of the woman. Dr. M. R. D. Hunt explains that in the trail of blood, the medical doctor turned preacher. How that Mary's body uh, fed the child without the blood passing up on the child Jesus. And I recommend that book. It was recommended to us in seminary. But it's was necessary in order for Jesus to be who he is. Had nothing to do with mankind. It was God that impregnated Mary by the Holy Spirit. And this is the record we have here. Now again, why do we use the King James Version? I've got back, I think, in my office a copy that someone gave me, a revised standard version, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, says, a young woman shall conceive, because they couldn't grasp the fact of a virgin birth. Folk, everything God does amazes me. I can't grasp it. I can't grasp a natural childbirth. But here was a virgin birth. And folks, God's able to do all things. He, he, he's a master of all things. So it was imperative that Mary be a virgin and also that she be of the seed of the lineage of David and of Judah. Judah have been the fourth born son of Jacob. But let's look at the state of the people at this time when the angel came and delivered the message that uh, our Lord was going to be born. The people were in spiritual apostasy. That means they had turned from the truth. Well, they, some of them still claim to be uh, worshiping God. The Pharisees and Sadducees were using the Bible, the Old Testament, for their own gain. Now remember, the New Testament was not written at that time because it hadn't transpired. But only a few true believers, it seems, existed at that time. Israel was in trouble. 
42 generations since the promise was made to Abram in verse 17. 42 generations had passed. 14 generations of captivity. Babylon, led by Nebuchadnezzar, was allowed to carry Israel away captive because of Israel's sins. The Babylonians ruled for a while. And Revelation tells us about the... Uh, Or Daniel tells us about the figure that came that pictured Nebuchadnezzar and, and then the Medes and the Persians carried away the Babylonians. Then Alexander the Great of the Grecians carried away the Medes and the Persians. All this happened in 14 generations. And Rome... was given power over Alexander the Great and the Grecians. But it was prophesied 14 generations. A chosen people, captive of their own sin. 14 generations of oppression and slavery. And folk talk about slavery here. And these people weren't black. They were the chosen nation of God. But because of their sin, God allowed them to be carried away. God's still not a respecter of persons. If his chosen people had to pay for it, likewise, those that are not his. But during this time of oppression and slavery, they yearned for a deliverer or a Messiah that would come and deliver them. But all had not forgotten the promise that God had made to Abram, who became Abraham. Some were anxiously awaiting the promise of the Messiah. And if you would, we'll read about one of those on your paper, Luke chapter 2, verse 25. Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. It was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. I have a good friend in Nacogdoches that I was around all my life. I was reminded of these words by what he said to me on his 100th birthday celebration. He's go it'll be 102 April the 7th of this coming year. He's always a believer in the Lord. He said to me, Brother James, I think the Lord's going to allow me to see the second coming. <coughs> like Simeon said, he was told that he was going to be able to see the constellation of Israel fulfilled. He was anxiously awaiting the birth. He was waiting the birth of one that would affect all generations. Every man that ever lived on this earth, no matter what color his skin may have been or may be, he's affected by the birth of our Savior. Jesus Christ. We have a, uh, Luke gives us the birth line all the way back to Adam. 
You remember Adam's first two boys, one of them killed the other. Cain killed Abel. Cain was banished. He went over into the land of Nod and there lived. But that left a, a gap for the Savior, didn't it? And the Lord sent Seth, right? And that's the lineage that Luke gives us. Now, Matthew doesn't go back that far. They're the only two of the uh, writers that gave us the record of the birth. Mark and John didn't mention those two. But Matthew goes back to Mary. Mary and Joseph both could be traced to the lineage. And Joseph had nothing to do with the birth. But he could trace, be traced back to the lineage of David. But if you would look down at, on your paper at Luke chapter 1, verse 32, talking about Jesus that was about to be born. He shall be great, shall be called uh, the son of the highest. The Lord God shall give him unto him the throne of his father David. Now, wasn't David's dad named Jesse? Correct. But the promise was made that the lineage, of course, would come through David. He shall reign forever over the house of Jacob, forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And verse 50 said, And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. But folks, why did our Lord come? To give all of us gifts and fill up stuff around the Christmas tree? Hey, it's his birthday and we're the one getting the gifts. <laughs> but why did all that occur? What was the reason? What was his mission in life? And we've got the answer, the very bottom page, the last verse. She, Mary, shall bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Folks, oh, that's what Jesus does. It saves us from our sins. Simeon yearned for him the first time. And I'm sure there were others, but the others are not named. And we look back at the first time and yearn for the second time, don't we? The second appearing of our Lord. Folks, it's not far over the hill. A lot closer than what we realize. Whether it's Bobby Sparks, a good friend of mine, young man, that, he was young when I knew him. We went to seminary together. He'd been over in Jerusalem. He just left the other day. And they just had the dedication of the altar that they've made for the new temple. And he explains all the uh, thing in his uh, on the Facebook of what all of it was involved. And the fellow that's in charge of rebuilding the temple was with Brother Bobby in the photo. We know there's going to be a third temple built, don't they? Because the Antichrist, the Bible says, is going to get in that temple and proclaim that he is God. That's going to happen, folks. We don't know just when. But Brother Bobby says they've already dedicated the altar, the brazen altar, the altar that uh, where the sacrifice was made to be put in that temple. 